Hey guys, Pat 27 here. Here I am in my apartment. And I know I don't make videos on my channel that often, but the next few weeks I'll be making several videos on three new objects that I just got yesterday. And those are... Da -da -da, clocks! Yes, I just got three new clocks yesterday and I'll be making several videos on them in the next few weeks. Here's what they'll be about. And let me explain to you each of these three clocks and I'll save the best one for last which is that one. Okay, so we'll start with this one. Well, actually, my videos will re only be about both of the other two because this one doesn't do much because this one doesn't chime, but the other two chime. That's what the video will be about chiming, and this one doesn't chime. Now, let me explain the other two. First of all, these two, this one, and then this one here that I'm gonna talk about first, these are, are battery powered, and then the pendulums aren't real. They don't do anything. Even the clock would still run without the pendulums. The pendulums are really just there for a decoration. And this one has an electric speaker chime, not real bell, it's just an electric speaker. It does the Westminster chimes every 15 minutes. Both these are Howard Miller. And now on to the most important and significant one, this baby here. The reason why this one is so important is because it's not brand new and cheap and electric like these two here. This one is um 122-ish years old. It used to be my great-grandfather's. And he passed away like 20 years ago. And my great aunt and uncle who had inherited it after he died are moving now and they're getting rid of a lot of their stuff. So they decided to give me this clock because they knew I was into clocks. And this one is a Seth Thomas Adamantine which we think was built around the year 1900, which would make it 122 years old. In this one, it strikes the hour on the hour and strikes once on the half hour. And maybe I'll make more in-depth videos about how this clock works down the road, but for now, what we'll be doing is with this one and then that one there, is log when they strike to see how accurate they each keep time. My great uncle, who's also into clocks and has two mechanical clocks himself, gave me an example of some chart that he uses to, so what he does is sometimes help write down the time for a week at the same hours every day that that clock struck the hour. I mean, what the actual time is at the moment the clock strikes. And I decided that I'd, instead of just doing the mechanical one, I just thought I'd do it with the electric one too to see how they each compare. And with this one, the mechanical one, there's a way I can adjust it to make it faster or slower. Maybe I'll show you that in a future video. I will show you at some point, just not in this video. Maybe if I have to adjust it, I'll show you me doing it. Anyways, as he said, to do it the same hours every day, the hours that I'm best available during the week when I work is 8 a.m. in the morning, and then in the afternoon, 7, 8, and 9 p.m. So I'm just gonna do those hours every day including the weekends, just to keep it constant. Okay, so it is now about 5.40 p.m. and today is Sunday. And also this clock is supposed to get wound once a week. So I just wound it today. Well, it was already pretty much wound because I just brought it home yesterday, but I just tightened it a little just to make sure. So yeah, this is all set for this next week. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna every day from today through Saturday at those hours, 8 a.m. 7, 8, and 9 p.m., except for 8 a.m. today, since obviously that's already passed. I'm going to be logging the exact time that both of these two clocks strike the hour. And I'll combine them, and I will record them all, and I will record it all on video, and combine all the segments into one video. He says I should do this for like a few weeks until I can get the clock to run on time. So we'll see what happens. He said that first when you wind it, like it, just for like a day or two, it'll start running a little fast and then it'll gradually get slower. So that's expected to happen. So that the way to tell whether to make it faster or slower is ex how it's running exactly one week from then. So what I'm gonna do next Sunday is compare the time that it strikes at 7 p.m. tonight to 7 p.m. next Sunday and see if it's earlier or later. Then if I have to adjust it, then I'll show you guys how I do it. Okay, so okay, so stay tuned for the video where I log the times at those hours every day where these two clocks strike the hour, and I'll see you then.